We are going to be talking about selling on stories. If you really want to stand out in stories, if you want to keep people coming back to your stories for more, you're going to have to share exclusive content today. So I'm spilling all the secrets that we use in our social media agency. What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Call Her Creator, powered by Stan. I'm your host, Caitlin Rhodes, and today we are going to be talking about selling on stories. I've got 10 tried and tested ideas for you to get more story views, to nurture your audience so that you can sell more of your product or your services. So let's get into it today. So today I'm going to walk you guys through how to get more story views. I know stories can be tricky, views can be down, views can be way less of people based on your follower account and people seem to get down um, when they do get those small story views. So we're going to talk about increasing those views. And then I'm going to walk you guys through 10 tried and tested ways that we use here at the agency to help our clients get better story views. So before we get into everything, I want to walk y'all through, of course, I like to do updates, obviously, on what's going on in the social media world. And today's topic has to do with threads. So I'm wondering, are you guys even still using threads? I think that threads are still, you know, thriving. I don't think they're as popular as they were that week that they came out. It was like crazy sauce whenever threads first came out, everyone was jumping to them. As an agency owner, I was kind of worried like, oh my God, should we be adding this to our list of services to manage for people? But I think things kind of slowed down, but I'm noticing when I scroll through my Instagram feed, feeds. I will sometimes see thread status updates pop up. So I do think it's still a relevant place for you to go to have conversation, maybe for you to, you know, be the industry expert, but it's not really at the forefront of my goals right now. Um, but I think it's totally up to you and your goals for social media if you want to be over there or not. Now, the update with threads comes from social media today. That's typically where I find my updates for you guys. If you need a trustworthy site to find updates, updates for all the social media channels out there. Social media today is a really good one. There's also the social media examiner. I like them a lot too. So I'll go back and forth between the two of those. So add those to your bookmarks if you don't have them out yet. And um, they will help you stay on top of the trends that are happening in the updates. So Thread is going to be testing trending topics. According to Meta CEO Mark Zuckerberg, the Threads team is still ironing out the details of this update, but soon there will be a version of trending topics within threads, which they're going to call today's topics. Very original Facebook, very original. Um, but what this is going to do, this is going to help users engage in more conversations of broad interest on the apps, which I think this was a long time coming. We've been waiting for this. This kind of helps you know, content creators, businesses, brands, even consumers, just kind of, it kind of helps filter out what exactly they're looking to talk about, kind of how X, formerly known as Twitter, how they have their trending topics. That used to be how I would get my form of news. I would head over to Twitter. I would see what was trending at the time. And that kind of kept me up to date with what was going on in the world. So I think this is really great of Meta to bring this new update over to Threads. What they have said is that timely topics listings will be determined by AI. And um, they're going to be based on what people are engaging with in the app. So basically like the top conversations, AI is going to see that and put that over as your timely topics of the day. There will be a level of customization, Thread says, to avoid topics that violate its community guidelines. But ideally, the listings will reflect key conversations and enable others to tap through to engage with the same conversations that they want to engage with. So I think this is a really good update. I don't know how you guys feel about this, but I think this is something that Threads was missing. Maybe it will get me over there more because again, I don't use it as much as I should, but I think it is because there's so much in my newsfeed. Like I can't really ever, I can't, I can't really be organized when I'm over there searching for content. Whereas if I'm on Instagram or TikTok, you know, I can go to the search or the explore page and I'm going to see stuff that's relevant to me. Threads is just kind of the wild, wild west for me right now. So I do believe that this update will help get more people over there. It will help us to trust the app more and it will help us to stay aligned with our specific goals and content creation. So good update over there for Meta and Threads. If this is your first time listening to Call Her Creator, please head over to my Instagram account 
account at call her creator. Follow me, leave me a message. Let me know what you want to hear on future episodes. I'd love to get your feedback. And you can also leave me a five-star review if you're feeling froggy. Um, I do like to spotlight my reviewers on an episode. So if you do leave a review, you could be on a future episode of Call Her Creator. All right, now let's get into stories. According to Hootsuite, which again, very reliable source, 62% of people surveyed by Facebook say they're more interested in a brand or product after they see it on stories. That's pretty huge, 62%, guys. I think this is a really big stat because obviously stories are a great way to humanize your voice, your brand, kind of puts a face to a name. Of course, there's brands out there that obviously don't have a face for the brand. Thinking about Nike, they still have, you know, models showing off their shoes. So I think stories are just a really good way for you to connect with people that are already following you. You know, they're kind of like hot leads because they're already interested in you. They're already friends with you. They're following you. So they're interested in what you have to share. So stories are my favorite place to sell just because I know that people watching my stories are more than likely already following me. They kind of already know who I am, but I'm obviously not just there to sell either. I'll get on stories and show behind the scenes what we're doing here at the agency or what I'm doing as a content creator. If I'm at this really cool event or something like that, those are going to be the things that I share on stories. Um, but there is some strategy behind it, which we'll get into in a minute. But let me continue on with these stats real quick. I've got three important stats for you guys. So 62% of people, you know, they said they're more interested in a brand once they see it on the stories. About 70% of Instagram stories are viewed with the sound on which I was very impressed by this stat. Um, but you still need to remember those other 30% have their sound off when they're watching stories. So I think it's important when I'm on stories and I'm ranting about something or I'm talking about a new offer or service, it's important for me to use the text overlay tool and kind of make a keyword or like a key phrase about what I'm about to talk about just in case there is someone watching my story with the sound off. I know as a new mom, when I was feeding the baby or putting the baby down and Instagram stories were my go-to to pass time. So think about those people that don't have their sound on. Make sure you have some key information on there, whether you're using the text overlay tool, maybe you're using the closed caption sticker, any of that, but make sure you have some kind of text on there if it's something important that they're not gonna be able to understand without the sound on. Now, the other stat I have for you guys before we get into strategy is how many times should I post on stories? I get that question a lot as an Instagram coach. I personally try to keep my stories like three to five slides a day whenever I'm posting there. But what I have read is that you don't want to post more than seven times a day. Once you start getting to seven times, people start exiting your story. They're just going to click off. It's too much for them. Now, the maximum stories that you can do in a 24 hour period, which is crazy to me, is 100 Instagram gives you a hundred times to post on your stories in a 24 hour period. Now, if you think someone is going to sit there and scroll through and tap through a hundred of your stories, you're crazy. It's probably not going to happen unless you're like Kim Kardashian and something crazy happened in your life. And we're just all interested in that. If you're just a brand or a content creator, I highly suggest sticking to three to five. But again, these stats say don't go over seven. So I think that's super helpful to know. So let's just get into how we increase story views, how we increase engagement. There are so many little tricks that you can use as a content creator when you're on stories. I actually, Gracie, one of our social media managers made some story graphics for one of our clients last week. And there was just a little bit of tweaks that I did to show her like, Gracie, our main goal here is one, obviously we want to show off something. Yes but you wanna get people tapping on those stories. You wanna get them engaging. So what I did with her is we went in, we added some engagement stickers, which I'm gonna talk about in a minute. We added like the tap here, you know, a bunch of little things that we added in. I'm gonna go through that with you guys today. So I'm spilling all the secrets that we use in our social media agency to you guys for free. So make sure you have your notes ready to go. So the first tip for increasing your engagement on stories is drum roll engagement stickers. And I'm sure you guys were ready for me to say this. Add an engagement driving sticker to your story. So I've talked about this in previous episodes. If there is something big that you want to promote on stories, always start your stories out using an engagement sticker and ask just like an easy to answer question. Uh, one of the quickest ways 
said by Instagram to boost your stories views is by adding the engagement sticker, such as the poll sticker, the emoji slide sticker, the quiz sticker, whichever one you want to use. And personally, I encourage you to use the poll sticker because it's super easy to use. Um, but what you're going to do there, why, why does this even work? Caitlin, you're probably asking me that. The stickers really encourage engagement. They right off the bat, they're a major nudge for your viewer to act now. It's like a call to action without a call to action. You've got the sticker there. These people are just burning to touch that yes or no poll sticker. So a couple ideas I have for you guys. Imagine maybe you use the poll sticker and you ask a question that relates to whatever product or service you're going to be promoting. Or, you know, maybe your story views have just been really crappy and you want to get them up. Ask something that anyone could answer. Maybe, for example, you have your coffee sitting here and you ask a simple question. How do you like your coffee? Hot, iced. I'm not a coffee lover. You've got three choices right there. People can easily click one or the other. The other side of that is the slider sticker. That's the emoji sticker. Now, a lot of people don't use the emoji sticker strategically. So I'm going to teach you guys how to do that today. So let's just envision that we have a story right in front of us. Okay. What you're going to do for the slider sticker is you're going to use the text overlay tool and you're going to ask a question and then you're going to put the slider sticker underneath that. Okay. Now, when you use the slider sticker, you can change the emoji to whatever you want. So I change it to an arrow or like the pointy finger, the point one. And so once you do that, the sticker there is going, it's going to show that arrow or that pointy finger, it's going to show it sliding up and down. So what you can do then is grab the text overlay tool again, and you're going to write like three different answers to whatever the question was, you're going to write three different answers. And then you're going to shrink those down really small and put them on top of the slider sticker, like right above the slider sticker. Okay. So what, what we're seeing here, if you're envisioning all of this is you're, you've got the question, you've got the choices for the answers, and then you've got the slider sticker under that to where they could basically slide that sticker to answer A, B, or C, whichever one you have there. So that's another fun way to use that little emoji sticker. A lot of people don't use it that way. A lot of people just use it and they keep like the happy smiley emoji there to show like how happy they are about something. But using this way with the arrow kind of helps people to decide what answer they want. So that encourages engagement on your stories. Now, another little secret that a lot of people don't know about is that if you add an extra story Story, at the end of the day, you have to be strategic with this. It has to be added. Okay, stories can run for 24 hours, right? So you're going to want to add this extra story within like that 22 to 23 hour mark. It's basically right before your story expires. And what that's going to do is it's going to boost some extra views to your stories. It's going to get you right back up on the front of the line. I don't know why this works. I cannot for the life of me figure out why this works, but it works. We've tried it. So trust me on this one. But right before you think your story is about to expire, go add another one. Maybe make it engaging. Maybe make it an engagement sticker. Use the slider. Maybe make a picture of your face and ask a question, something easy. But go ahead and try adding that in right at the end of the you know, the end of your time and just see what happens for your story views. We've, we've gotten really good results from that little hack. The next thing that you need to keep in mind when you are running stories is people need a reason to look at your story because they're already following you. They're already seeing you in your feed. They're already seeing your post, your reels. So what is going to make your stories different? So that's where I tell you share exclusive content that you're not sharing over on your Instagram, you know, your account. It's so easy for us to take a post that we've already posted and share it to stories, you know, add a little like one liner. That's great. I use that strategy all the time to get my posts out in front of more people. But if you really want to stand out in stories, if you want to keep people coming back to your stories for more, you're going to have to share exclusive content that they're not going to see anywhere else on your profile. So I have some examples for you guys, a couple you know, different examples here based on who you are. So if you're a brand, this could be like an exclusive 24 hour discount code that they're only going to find over on your stories. So then in your, your bio of your profile, you could always say, peep my stories for exclusive discounts. That's going to get people interested in looking at your stories, right? If you're a creator or an influencer, content creator, you could do a special tutorial that you only show over on your stories. One girl that I follow, she's very smart with this. When I went to her profile the other day, in the bio, it said, trending audio shared to stories. So I knew if I followed her, I would be able to get trending audio 
from looking at her stories. So that kind of enticed me like, oh, I got to remember to look out for this girl's stories. It's going to save me time. I'm not going to have to scroll for trends. She's sharing them to her stories. So put yourself in your target audience's mind. What is something that they are going to want from you? What is like an exclusive tip or tutorial or maybe just one little teeny tiny activity that you could take off their plate and give to them in your stories? That is what you're going to want to think of when it comes to sharing exclusive content on stories. You got to differentiate yourself. You got to make them want to go watch that story. So if you could tell them like, hey, if you follow me, check out my stories for X, Y, Z. That's what's going to make them go check out your stories. Because I know story views have been low for me lately. And I do think that I shouldn't reveal this, but I think that a part of my story views being down is because I got lazy with it and I got into the habit of posting to or posting like a reel or a post. And then I would just send it to my stories and, you know, make it pretty, draw on it, put a little one liner. But I think at the end of the day, people are kind of getting sick of that. It's like, I already see that in my feed. I can already go to your profile for that, Caitlin. Give me something more. So that's where where you're going to want to differentiate and share something exclusive that they're not going to find over on your profile. So if there's anything you take from this training today, this episode, I really want you to dive deep into your audience's mind and figure out what is one thing that you could do for them and share to your stories. And that can be like your exclusive thing. And then, you know, cross promote that post on your Facebook page, send out an email, let them know like, hey, I'm going to be sharing exclusive content that you will not find anywhere else unless you watch my Instagram stories. And that's kind of kind of going to like get them excited to go. It's going to prime them up to go watch your stories. The next hack we have for increasing story views is using the close friends feature. Now, a lot of people do not use this. And the only re the only Ways that I've really seen people using this is like I've seen some of my personal like friends sharing maybe like a story of their children that they don't want everyone to see. I know that that's how I use it on my personal profile is I have just close friends that I'm okay if they see my kids. I'm really weird about my kids on my social. I know you guys have probably noticed that they're not on there too much. So I'll use that close friends feature just to show off my kids to my close friends. But there's a way to use this as a business. Now, something that you should know is when you add someone to your close friends on stories, you will be pushed to the front of their storyline. So why is that? Instagram prioritizes content from close connections. So if you're adding these specific people to your close friends and you post just for your close friends, Instagram is going to prioritize your story to the front of the line for those people. Now, a way for you to use this as a brand is to think about maybe like you could have a list of like brand ambassadors, influencers, or repeat customers, those VIP clients of yours. If you can add them to your close friends, this is going to take some time because you have to do this manually. But if you add them to your close friends, they're going to feel a sense of like closeness to you. Like, wow, Caitlin really loves me. She added me to her close friends. I get to see this exclusive content that no one else gets to see. Now, when it comes to close friends, the best way for you to use that is maybe you share a secret tutorial. Maybe you have a discount code for those close friends, which now that I'm thinking about this, like insider tip, I'm running a campaign right now to push a specific service. And I'm thinking what I could do to get more people on board with this is add, you know, I could even put random people that are following me into this close friends story and then offer them like a discount code to join this offer that I have. So just think about things like that. Like how can you utilize the close friend story to make people feel close to you, to offer them something exclusive, and then of course know in your head that it's gonna push you to the front of the line. So there's really no reason not to be using the close friend story. And last thing before I go to the next tip here is I know like as a consumer, I'm on someone's close friends right now. And so anytime he posts to that close friends, I'm like tapping it because I'm like, this is exclusive just for my eyes only. And it, I don't know, it just kind of encourages me to go watch that story because I feel like they took the time to add me to their close friends list. I should take the time to go watch their story. It's kind of like a mindset thing, I guess. All right, so getting into stories, when people do use the question sticker, what you'll have to do is you'll have to go watch your story and scroll up on the post that has that sticker. And from there, you're gonna see any question that anyone has asked you. And then Instagram allows you to either reply privately to them in a, in a message, or you can share their question to your next story. So it would basically have like the story on top of you and then you could talk and answer it. Or if you don't wanna show your face, you can always 
put a picture there, share the question, and then type out your response. The question sticker is my holy grail when it comes to creating content. My audience gives me really good feedback. I've also seen a girl who, her name's Carr, I love her. She does really great Instagram tips, but she will ask for feedback from her audience and then she'll screenshot the questions and then she turns it into a carousel post on her Instagram account. So she's taking, she's really smart with this. She's taking user generated feedback from her audience and she's resharing that as a new post, as a carousel to get in front of more eyes in her feed. And then she's also, you know, making herself the industry expert because she's sitting there answering the questions. I know another Instagram content creator who does this too. She's not in the Instagram coaching field. She's more in the dating field, but she does a really good job at that too because people People will ask questions about dating and she'll have their question there and then she'll answer them. And it's like a video carousel. And I'm not even dating. I'm married now, but I'm still interested in her questions because she just does such a good job at answering them and providing us with the information. That's a really fun way to show up on stories. The next one is doing a pop quiz. These are really fun too. So there is something called the quiz sticker. Um, this is another Instagram story engagement sticker. And what you can do there is you can kind of quiz your knowledge of your audience. So you can provide up to four possible choices for them to choose from and only one of them is correct. When someone votes or answers your quiz, it does tell them if they're right or wrong. And then for you as the user who posted that, if you go back to your story and scroll up, you will be able to see how many people voted for what. Imagine that a majority of your audience is answering the question wrong, then that's going to alert you like, hey, maybe this is a topic that I need to go deeper in on a reel or an Instagram carousel. So use this to your advantage. When people are giving you feedback, Use it for more content to share with your audience because they're giving you direct feedback. You're not playing the guessing game here. They're telling you what they want to learn about. The next story idea to sell is daily routines. And these are my favorite piece of content to post to stories. I think it's a really good way to be intimate with your followers and let them know like, what is a day in the life of a realtor? What is a day in the life of an Instagram coach? When people do these, I am always so intrigued by them and I watch every single story because I want to know what are they doing on a day to day basis. So when you do these, you know, you could take, say you're a realtor and you're going to take your audience on the journey of someone going house hunting for the day. That would be really fun. Um, say you're an Instagram coach or a content creator. I like to show them how I wake up, what kind of coffee I'm drinking. Am I going to exercise before I start creating content? Am I talking to them about how many reels I'm going to be courting that day? Am I showing them behind the scenes of me building out a course for my audience? Whatever it is, I just feel like it's an intimate way to connect with my audience and show them that one, I'm a real human and two, I'm the industry expert. Here's what I'm doing on a day to day basis. And what, you know, like prove your worth to them in your stories with a daily routine. The next piece of content you can post on your stories is sharing an actual story. Walk them through something that happened with you. Obviously, this is fitting because Instagram stories were meant to be for storytelling. So maybe let's go back on the realtor thing. Maybe you're talking about how you helped a client win this offer on this home that they really wanted and you walk us through the story of that. Or maybe you are just getting into the business and you made $10,000 in your first 30 days. So you want to tell your audience how you did that. Tell us your story. Tell us the struggle. Tell us your pain point and then tell us how you overcame that and what you did. And then if you think about it, DMs are, are the place to sell. So once you do tell that story, that can segue you into buying an offer from you because you're, you're showing them how you had this problem, you solved it by this, and now you're gonna help them solve their own problem with this, hire you now. You see where I'm going with that? Like you're telling the story, but then you're selling to them in the end. Another little hack to get your story in front of more people and to get better views is to tag people in your stories. Now, do not be spammy with this. I, as social marketing queen, I guess because I have a lot of followers, people will tag me for spam stuff. And I guess they're tricking you, first of all, because when they tag me, I end up going and watching it because it said so-and-so tagged me. So I watched their story. They got a story view from me. Blech. But if you're strategic with this and you're smart with this, you will tag people that will share it to their own stories. And think about maybe if you are a local business and maybe you're spotlighting another business. If you tag them, they're going to want to share it onto their own stories. So then now you're getting in front of your audience and their audience. I love to tell my realtors to do this because of the level of their business and how personal it is. Hey, go grab a burger, snap a picture of your burger, tag the restaurant that you're at, and then hopefully they'll share it for you. 
So it's just using strategic strategies like that to get in front of more eyes, it's gonna work well for you. This also relates back to what I tell you guys when it comes to doing Instagram Lives. Find someone that compliments your brand and tag them in your story or talk about them and that will get you in front of more eyes. If you don't know what to do for this but you wanna try this hack out, you could do the thing where people say, here's the top three accounts I'm following this month. And then, you know, tag three accounts that you admire and love and share those because then that person's going to get alerted and they have the choice to reshare it to their stories. I know that when people tag me and stuff like that, it feels really good that people are noticing my hard work. So I tend to reshare it back onto my stories. So, of course, that's helping the person out whoever tagged me because they're getting in front of my people, too. The next hack I have for you guys is to post three days in a row. Now, why should you post three days in a row? Why shouldn't I just post five days in a row? Why shouldn't I post every day? Yes, you can post every day, but you don't wanna give story fatigue. You don't want people to watch your stories and be like, wow, she's really boring. I don't wanna watch her stories anymore. So kind of have in your toolkit, I'm gonna post three times this week in a row to talk about a specific thing, one thing. So let's just say you're a realtor. I don't know why I'm talking about realtors today, but I am. So if you're a realtor listening to this episode, you're welcome. Let's just act like you have a new listing. So day one, you're just going to announce the new listing. New listing, take a picture of the house. Then the next day, you're going to go into more depth about that house. So maybe that first day you're like, hey, new listing, stay tuned. I'll be telling you more soon. Then the next day you're going to say, hey, remember that house I shared about yesterday? I'm taking you guys on a tour and you'll go and show them around the house. And then the next day is going to say, wow, guys, we're getting a lot of offers on this home. If you want to book your tour with me today, book it now before this house is gone. So you see how I kind of like built them up. Like I announced it, I teased it, I told them a little bit more, and now I'm creating urgency. Like they need to act now. So put yourself in this scenario as a business owner. Maybe you own a car wash. So the first day, you know, you could just say like, hey, we're here. Maybe it's like a behind the scenes of you at the car wash. Then the next day you're talking about the benefits of using your car wash. Then the third day is look how beautiful this car came out. Come get your car wash today. You don't have to, you know, incentivize them with a discount code. You could, but you don't have to. You could just show your results. Show us how they went through the car wash. They came out looking shiny and new, and now they want to go get their car wash. Do something that entices your audience. Build them up entice them, right hook, as Gary Vee says, give them a call to action that is gonna make them do something right now. Number seven for increasing your story views is using the countdown sticker. This one is really fun. Um, if you have like an upcoming event, you can utilize the countdown sticker and ask your audience to click the reminder. If they do click that button, what it will do is it will send them a notification on the day of of whatever your reminder sticker is for. Um, not only does this ping the algorithm when people are clicking on that story, but it's again, it's gonna notify your followers. So they're gonna get notified in a couple days again. So you're gonna pop back up at the top of their notifications. So that's that's a two way street right there. One, you're getting the engagement from them clicking on it. Two, you're they're getting alerted about you again a couple days later. So you're popping back up at top of mind. This is great for like maybe a coming soon event that you have. Maybe you are going to be running a promotion soon. Maybe you're going to be pulling a training soon. Just think about things that are happening in the future and how you can kind of tease that up and get your audience excited about it. This kind of ties into number eight, which is sharing sneak peeks. So sneak peeks are a really cool way to show exclusive content to your audience and get them excited about something. So you sneak do a sneak peek and build up that excitement before you actually reveal whatever it's going to be. So this kind of goes back to the three day rule. That first day, share a sneak peek of something. This could even be like you're not revealing fully what it is. So let's say that I'm promoting a new episode of the podcast this week. So maybe, you know, my sneak peek could be a picture of, you know, my face behind the microphone something's coming this week. You're gonna use that text overlay tool and you're gonna build some type of excitement. You're gonna put a one-liner there of whatever's coming. But make sure you use the word sneak peek or coming soon or stay tuned, something that gets them excited. Um, sneak peeks work really well, especially for, I'm thinking about realtors with a coming soon listing. You could use the sneak peek to share what's gonna come. If you have a new offer, if you have a ice cream shop and you've got a new flavor coming, sweet frogs, you could be doing this. There's so many things that you could sneak peek without even having like an actual new thing coming. You could just sneak peek like your social media post that's coming this week. That's gonna teach them how to X, Y, Z. 
You know, you don't always have to have a sales or promotion going on to use this strategy. You just need to build some hype up. The next tip I want to lean into is quality over quantity. Now, when it comes to stories, it's very different versus posting on your feed. Gurus and coaches will tell you quantity over quality when it comes to posting. They want you to post as much as possible so that you get in front of as many people as possible. But for stories, it really should be quality over quantity because if you are always posting the same thing over and over again or you're not posting anything new that they haven't seen already from your feed, they're going to get bored of your stories and they're just going to start clicking over you. So you definitely want to be valuable. Don't share fluff on stories. Share actual content that is good for the soul, good for them, a learning experience, something that teaches them something, something that's enticing. Once people start, you know, clicking over your stories, the algorithm sees that and the algorithm will slowly push you to the back of the line and you're not going to be showing up for people anymore. So that's why it's super important for you to share quality content over quantity. Another little quick tip to help your story views is to use location tags, kind of similar to using the tagging of people or profiles. You can tag the location that you're in. And what this does is this increases the chances of that audience finding you when they go to search for that location specific hashtag or post or whatever it is. When they go to the explore page and they search like Austin, Texas or something like that. If your story is doing really good, it's going to pop up there for them to see. So using the location tag is a winning strategy for you to get in front of a more local audience. Maybe you're a brick and mortar store. So any story that you're showing that is at your actual store, tag your location. You don't have to make it front and center of your story. You know, you can make the product or the service front and center, but just tag your location and move it down to the bottom of your story. That's just going to help you get in front of of a more localized audience, more specific niche audience that is searching for that location. All right, so to close out this episode, stories are a really good way to get in front of people that already know who you are. They're already following you. I consider them hot leads. So that's why I believe that selling in stories is the best place for you to sell is because these people already know who you are. So they're more than likely going to buy your product or service because they trust you a little bit more versus posting a reel out to brand new followers who've never even heard of you before. You've got a little bit of lead way when it comes to posting in stories because you're posting in a more warm audience. So this is my favorite place to sell. I hope that you will take these tips and utilize them. They are going to help your story views. They're going to help your engagement rates. And if you would like to understand Instagram stories analytics a little bit more, you can go back to the episode before this. I shared an episode about Instagram analytics and insights, and I go over Instagram stories insights for you. I let you know how to find those insights, how to read them, how to understand them, and how to do better with them so that you can increase your engagement. So definitely check out that episode if you haven't. And if this is your your first time listening to Call Her Creator, again, please go leave me a review. Let me know what you think of the podcast. You can also DM me on Call Her Creator or Social Marketing Queen. I would love to get your feedback on this episode and maybe a future episode that you want to hear. I am here for you guys. I'm here to help you make money doing what you love, following your passion. So let me know what's what's out there. What do you want to learn about? And I'll be happy to teach that on a future episode. But thank you so much for listening. That is all I have today. Social Marketing Queen signing out.